guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle and welcome to Q and J. We've compiled some questions from YouTube and our Eons of Battle Discord server, and we've been answering the internet's most burning questions. First question, if you could only keep one model from your collection, what would it be? That, I think about this a lot, because sometimes when I'm drifting off to sleep, I fantasize about a fire just burning my entire house down and taking out all of the models. And sometimes it's sometimes it's a nightmare, but sometimes it's a little bit of a fantasy. And then I can be like, great, I'm starting a new life as a minimalist. <laughs> just being done with it all. But sometimes it's a nightmare. And uh, it's really like, what model would I save? Because I love my Centurions. I love my Centurion war suits. But if I could only keep one of them, full squads three, one of them's not doing me much good. I think I would have to go with Stompy. Stompy is my Reaver Titan. Definitely the biggest model in my collection. It's glorious, it's huge, it's from the chapter Sutravora, and it actually won me won me a commended entry at Golden Demon Adepticon. So yeah, I think I think that would be, if I can only take one model, that would be the one I save, and it'd be a pretty hard one to save from a burning building, because it weighs about seven pounds. Next question, what is your favorite brand slash type of brush, and why do you prefer them over other more expensive type slash brushes? I have used a ton of brushes, and I have bought some really nice brushes, I bought some really crummy brushes, and I kind of have two favorites. My number one favorite has got to be Rosemary & Co. Synthetic Series 313, sizes 3 and 5. Those brushes are phenomenal, they're they're synthetic, they have a really good springiness to them, they're like tough. Uh, I treat them really badly, but they haven't broken on me, I've used the same brushes for years and years and years now. I love those brushes so much, particularly like the size 3. I try to not use quite as much to keep the tip nice, and then the size 5 I just blast through models with. But my other suggestion would be cheapy cheap Walmart brushes. Honestly, I use Walmart brushes more than I use my nice brushes. Anything where I don't need to be perfectly accurate or I just need to slap down a ton of paint, I, I let paint get into the furl, I have never washed them before. I actually have a giant pack of like Taclon orange synthetic brushes that I actually got from a teacher of mine. When she retired, I helped clean out her office. And so she gave me a lot of her old art supplies. And so I have like bins of these cheapy, cheap brushes that are garbage. None of them have any tips whatsoever, but I use them nonstop for washes and contrast paint and doing my own painting mixtures. Every now and then you get a little like a couple of bristles just hanging out in the corner and it's like, you know, those those eight bristles are just hanging out. They're pretty sharp. And so I've done like eyes and fine lines with those two. Yeah, I feel like brushes I've used good. I have some Da Vinci Maestro brushes and they're fine, but I don't really like natural hair brushes because I feel like they often don't have the springiness I like. They tend to be a little a little uh, flaccid. So I, I like synthetic brushes quite a bit. Next question. Will you ever make battle reports on this channel? Oh, battle reports. We actually tried to make some battle reports. We filmed everything. We got the lighting figured out. We tried to get the how to actually film a battle report figured out, get the audio something. It, it's really hard. It is really hard to make a battle report. Never say never, but it is it is actually way more challenging than we thought it was going to be. And it's just hard. It's hard to do a really good job. And we would want to do a really good job because, yeah, we could do just like a bunch of over the shoulder stuff or have it be like all the camera's point of view. But it's really it actually is really hard to make a really good battle report. And we would want to do a really good job because I think some battle report channels are all about like the tactics and the game being played. But I think more something a little bit more interesting would be making it a little bit more of a narrative. Like the reason that I feel like sports games are interesting is because of the narrative of the two different teams fighting. And it, the rules are usually simple. Just get ball into place or keep ball away from place. And so it's really easy to glance at and to understand what's going on where a tabletop war game could be like Sean's up 55 points to my 31. We're in top of turn three and I still have to pick my oath the moment target. Like it's really hard to make that sort of information accessible at a glance. So yeah, battle reports really tricky. We might one day. It would be an interesting thing to do, especially if you could do it the way we want to do it. But yeah, it's uh, not going to be tomorrow. Next question. Do you plan on making any more painting challenges with Nick in the future? Yes. We actually have a pretty big pile of shame of projects that are set up for exactly that. It's just scheduling, finding the time, finding the right reason and the right like interesting idea behind it, finding the time. 
Yeah, we have a lot, a lot of really interesting stuff. Not all of it 40K related. Next question. I'm hungry. Not really a question, but thoughts. I agree. I am also a bit peckish. I think I might need to make some egg salad sandwiches soon to keep myself uh, all gassed up. Next question. What is your favorite spray primer? I use Army Painter recently, having left it in warm water, shaken it for ages, and sprayed the right amount and distance, and doing not too much at once, and I still got a fluffy finish. Yeah, spray paint can definitely be temperamental. I really like uh, Rust-Oleum Black. It's I used to really like Rust-Oleum Flat Black Primer, but I don't even know if they make it anymore. It seems like you can only get Paint and Primer Plus. But I think the new formulas for Paint and Primer Plus are okay. They don't seem to really build up a thick layer of paint anymore. So I really like that. Also, shout out to the Vallejo spray paints. I've gotten a couple of those over the years. They spray really, really nicely, like a really fine mist. I feel like if you want to do like a Zenithal highlight, you kind of can't do it with Home Depot rattle can primers because usually whites tend to be a little bit spitty. And so you're not going to get a really nice look. But I think you could probably get a pretty decent Zenithal if you just maybe use like a rattle can black and then you used the nice Vallejo spray for the white or for whatever color you want to Zenithal. If you're getting kind of a crunchy complexion to your minis, it's probably because it's either way too humid or way too dry outside to spray and the paint is drying in the air, or you should never spray paint in direct sunlight because the sunlight can also, if it's hot and sunny, it can bake the paint in the air and then that dry paint lands on the model and sticks. So those, yeah, rattle cans can sometimes be a little bit tricky, but there's nothing better if you got a lot of things to prime. Next up, when are we seeing you painting your next Titan, not meaning Imperium, but there is Tyranid, Eldar, and Tau, which are Titan-sized. Please, smiley face. Uh, I, yeah, Titans. I actually do have a couple of more Titans, and I have some Titan-E-sized miniatures kicking around that I have had ideas on. The non-Imperial Titans definitely have me a lot more interested than the Imperial Titans. I'll never, I'll never do a Warlord. I will never do a Warlord Titan. And tag this video when I do, eventually do a Warlord Titan, but it never will. Um, the Necron uh, Canoptic thingy, the giant Necron guy, he's really, really cool. I really like the Eldar Titans, particularly like the Phantom Titan with the two uh, Mega Lances. That guy is really, really sweet. And I do have thoughts about doing not a, not a Eldar army, but a Harlequin army. And I've seen a couple of people do the Titans in a Harlequin style and it looks really cool. So I probably won't tackle another Titan, but if I do, it'll definitely be a Xenos Titan. Next question, best Warhammer pickup line. I think the best Warhammer pickup line is probably Warhammer, never heard of it. Next question, how many armies above a thousand points do you have? Black Templar, Orcs, Drukhari, Tyranids, Grey Knights, Gene Steeler Cult. I think that's it. Six? I think it's six. Next question. What are your 40K hot takes slash unpopular opinions? Oh, I have had many, many over the years. Um... What is my hottest, most unpopular take? I really don't think the Silent King should have returned from his exile in the warp. The story, I have a whole video on why the story in heaven is the greatest story ever told in the history of 40K. The Silent King dooming his entire species to like endlessly live eternally in unfeeling, unchanging bodies as they're slowly ground into nothing by time. Like it's an amazing story. And this, this guy, the Silent King, it's all his fault. And so him putting all of the Necrons into slumber so that the galaxy can kind of repopulate and rebuild itself so that the Necrons even have a shot of one day having another empire while he himself exiling himself to the farthest reaches of space because he just doesn't even deserve to be in the galaxy anymore. He's the worst. Him just showing back up because the Tyranids are scary. I, I don't like that at all. It was it was a really cool story until he showed back up. And then he shows back up and he's got a beautiful chair and a cool hat. And it's like, this is not, this is not somebody who's so ashamed they exiled themselves for 65 million years. It, I don't get it. And are the Tyranid really the ultimate scary thing in that's ever existed? Like, I feel like the Tyranid aren't even that big a deal and mostly don't care about the Necrons because the Necrons don't have biomass. Yes, the Tyranid do want like metal and things in their constructs, but 
I feel like Necrons are mostly safe and could maybe just go back to sleep for another 65 million years and let the whole Tyranid thing blow over. Next question, how come you still have to buy g -dub stuff? Surely at 200,000 subscribers, you should be giving you stuff for free. We have no relationship with Games Workshop. Uh, I don't, we wouldn't really want one. Like, Games Workshop doesn't really do interesting things with creators, and if we were to have a relationship with them, we would just want to do weird and wacky things. There's a, there, I don't, I just don't think there's anything to it. Like, I also think Games Workshop is doing just fine without us, and if we want, it seems like if you do work with Games Workshop, you can sometimes get some stuff early, but not, like, we, it wouldn't be interesting to us to get, like, a product and then rush it out. And, you know, is it going to be something that is interesting for us? Because we only do videos about the models and the units and the things that we care about. So just not really interested. And Games Workshop seemingly is doing just fine without us. Next question. Jay, were your thoughts on playing old vintage versions of 40K or other Games Workshop games for kicks? Would love to. Actually kind of tricky to do. Really, there's no point to playing anything 6th edition, 7th edition, 8th edition, 9th edition. They're too current and they're too bad. Like, nobody wants to play 6th edition. 5th, 4th, 3rd, and 2nd are definitely a little bit more interesting. I would lean towards 2nd because it was a nice blend of, like, the RPG D&D stylings of Rogue Trader with it a little bit more of a game poured on top of it. But it's really hard to find all of the materials that you need to play those older games. Like the models are kind of specific. The actual cards and things that you need to play the game are very specific. It's actually not that easy to just go back in time and play different versions of 40K, but I would definitely be down for it. Next question. How do you feel about Adepticon coming to Milwaukee? Mwah! I love it. It's the greatest thing that ever happened. When they were in Chicago, it wasn't even that, that bad a drive, but oh, oh having it, having it in our backyard is, is just, just perfect. I absolutely cannot wait to go to Adepticon in my state. It's going to be absolutely lovely. Next up, have you really never won a game of 40k or is that a bit? It's a little bit of a bit, a little bit true. I've been playing tons of 10th edition and I, a part of the reason why I keep losing 10th edition is I, I try new things out constantly. I try new armies. I've played a lot of Tyranid. I've played a lot of Space Marines. I've tried out almost every different detachment with Tyranids and Space Marines and jumping from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing just to try it for like the experience leads to not playing very well, especially since I'm going up against Sean, who has got like tournaments on the brain. And so he's got his Imperial Guard parking lot tank list, which is kind of a stat check army, four Lehman Resses, four indirect or three indirect fire guns. Four Lehman Rust Demolishers, mind you, the indirect guns, and then three Scout Sentinels are, that's a lot of toughness, eight, ten, or seven, 10, and 11 to chew through. It is really, it's, if you don't, if I don't have the anti-tank to deal with it, I kind of just have to play the objectives and hope for the best because there's no way I can kill those units, so. But I am working on some new lists that are a little bit more all comers and a little bit more like actually trying the game out. I've done a lot of, of Righteous Crusade for Black Templar and Vanguard Strike Force for regular Space Marines. So I have started to narrow in and won some more games where I actually play the army in the scenario instead of just trying out every fun thing I can think of. Next question, can you make a dwarf video again, please? Yes, I actually have a ton more dwarves since that last video. I really like how the dwarves turned out. They didn't take that long to paint. And I maybe have some gyrocopters, which I'm really excited about. They actually disappeared from the Games Workshop web store and I was devastated because they were always like in my shopping cart. But then I actually found them at a friendly local game store. So I'm really excited to do a little bit more dwarfy stuff and give Old World a try because it actually looks like a really fun game in the crunch. The miniatures are also very crunchy. Next up, have you ever designed or thought about designing a game? What was it? No. I mean, a little bit. We actually did play around with coming up with a card game. We have some ideas and thoughts about doing another game. A friend of ours wants to make a game. It's really hard. It's really hard and I'm not good at it. Like it would take, I would have to make like three or four or five games to be good at it. And then like not release any of those. And then finally come out with a game and it probably wouldn't be like, I, I love playing games. I love painting things for games. I love getting a new game. I have a, un all of Uncle Adam's games that are like the, that are just one book and then you find the minis and you make it happen. Like I really like games, but that doesn't mean I'm at all good at making a game or that it'd be a good idea for me to make a game. So no current plans. 
future up in the year. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. We could probably do it, but I don't know if we could do a good job yet. And so that's the one thing that we're holding off on. Next up, do you do anything special to prevent back pain while painting? I got into the hobby in my mid-30s, and my back is killing me after a couple of hours of painting. Yes, I do. Uh, I have, if you ever notice when I'm painting, like you can kind of only see this much of me, and that is because my desk is three feet in the air. And the reason for that is it's kind of, it started out for two different reasons. And number one, it was so that the camera can see what I'm painting, because if you do like the elbow, elbow, hands in the, like praying pose for painting a model, it's kind of hard to keep the model right where I need it, but having the model essentially sitting on the table and then my hands next to it laying flat on the table, it makes it much easier to keep the model right where I want it. And it has the added benefit of it keeps me, it keeps my posture good. It takes all the stress off of my arms and my hands. And so I can just kind of work. I mean, I'll work for eight, 10, sometimes more hours and feel absolutely nothing while I'm just working on my minis. And a uh, third benefit, I don't drop things nearly as much as I used to, because if you're working right on the edge of the desk, it always drops right into the, gr onto the ground. If I'm working on the table, sometimes it still manages to bounce, bounce, bounce and go off the table. But most of the time, things actually stay on the desk. Next up, Games Workshop retcon stuff all the time. But if given the chance, what would you retcon? Um, this might be another unpopular take. I would maybe I almost wish that we could retcon a lot of the models that have come out over the years. I like Space Marines, Orcs and Imperial Guard specifically feel like they're in a really weird place because there's so many versions of normal infantry troopers like Orc Boys, Tactical Space Marines and Cadian Shock Troops are supposed to be like the thing of the army. You bring them, you want to bring them, you want to do amazing things with them. But now there's Infiltrators, Incursors, Hellblasters, and Furnace Marines, Stern Guard Veteran, like dozens and dozens, you know, Beast Snaga Boys, like Flash Gits, like all of these different things that are kind of vying for your attention that the, the armies kind of feel weird right now. Kind of because Eldar hasn't really gotten much of anything over the years, they actually feel like they're in a good place. Like they feel like the army should, you know, you got your Dire Avengers, you got your Guardians, then you got your aspect warriors, but they're all super unique and special. And that's kind of it. So those armies at a glance, they feel right. And they feel like they're representative of a faction where the other things, orcs, imperial guard, space marines, they kind of feel like a jumbled mess where you don't. If somebody says I play space marines, you don't necessarily know what they're bringing or the, the, what their army looks like. They're probably not taking any of the basic, basic troops. And it's just, I don't know, it's a. I like the new cool things, but I also don't like the new cool things. It's kind of this weird in between, but I could, I could bump a couple off. Maybe in Furnace Marines. I think they could go aggressors. People love aggressors. I don't want to bump off aggressors, but I might. I might do it. Next question. What goes on behind the scenes at EOB? So, so, so many your mom jokes. It's wild. Every 15 to 45 seconds, there's a good your mom joke. That's pretty much most of what we do. Other other than painting models and like recording audio, it's it's your mama jokes. Next up, question slash request. Tell us more about the pipeline of your terrain packs. It has certainly evolved over the years, and now I think we're in a pretty good spot. We kind of all work together, but mostly me to come up with the actual idea of what the pack should be. And then it goes off to our concept artist, and then she does some drawings and some ideas and examples of what it could look like or some directions to go in in terms of art style and design. And then I work with her back and forth to kind of finalize it into a certain number of objects and a certain style and vision. And then that goes off to our sculptor, Radium Minis, and then he builds it physically. And then he and Nick work together to do test prints and make sure that all of the components actually work the way that we think they're going to work. We do alterations based on what is physically what we're able to do with 3D printing technology. And sometimes things just need to be changed because they don't work or they don't look good. And we do all we just kind of keep going back and forth and back and forth until at the end of the process, we're left with exactly what we want and what would make for a good terrain pack. It is. Uh, it is a lot of work, but we do make some really, really cool stuff. Specifically this month, we have the Starship Interior. Ever wanted to fight your battles in the labyrinthine hallways of a starship? Moving your models in tight formation through a maze of corridors, bulkheads, and junctions, where retreat is impossible and danger is around every corner? 
Well, the Eons of Battle Starship Interior is here to make your dream a reality. For the month of July, subscribers to our Patreon will receive the Starship Interior, a set of claustrophobic, dynamic, and modular hallways that are scaled to perfectly suit wargaming natures and give you a new way to play. And if you always want to be up to date on the goings on here at Eons Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we're picking at three followers to win this month's terrain. You can follow the link in the description to sign up to our newsletter. Next up, if you could kitbash slash sculpt any Tyranid based on an ocean creature, what would it be and why? Um, I think somebody left a comment on one of our videos forever ago, and they said that Tyranid should have their own version of an Imperial Knight, which is just a giant kaiju Godzilla monster. And that is the greatest idea I've ever heard in my entire life. Why hasn't Games Workshop done that? In theory, that's what Tyranid should actually do. Weirdly, the Tyranid, for being like an alien organism designed to strip planets of all resources, they fight very fairly, basing their armies on mostly human-sized dudes with human-style weapons. Why not just poop down to a planet with like 11 Godzillas and just wreck everything? I think giant, like monstrous kaiju would be really, really cool for the Tyranid. Next up, if you could take a single old model and revitalize it to new day standards, what would it be? Warhammer 40k or Warhammer Fantasy? Um... I, every, it feels like everything has been done, but I would probably say Inquisitor and Terminator armor. There was one available on Forge World for the longest time, but it's since been discontinued. I think I think I would like to see some more Inquisitors and maybe like a build your own Inquisitor. Because right now, what there's Kyria, um, Kotiez. There's like a couple of named Inquisitors, but I think like a build a bear Inquisitor kit, which kind of did exist in the past with the old metal like lead Inquisitors. There were a lot of named Inquisitors back then, but I remember Inquisitor and Terminator armor. It was like a two pack and then you got a bunch of weird arm options. I would like to see like a Build-A-Bear style Inquisitor and an Inquisitor in Terminator armor would make a basic guy probably strong enough that he'd actually be able to survive on the tabletop and not just be a weird battery you attach to random units. Next up, have you ever thought the Black Templar weren't the army for you? Yes. If Space Marines, and specifically Black Templar, didn't get the Primaris treatment, I probably would have given up. Because in 5th and 6th edition, Black Templar were garbage. And I built a proper Black Templar army. All melee Space Marines, back when Space Marines had no business ever going into melee. I, would, I lost every single game. The models were fine. So many tactical Marines, because I was in high school, and so I couldn't afford the Black Templar upgrade packs. And so... I would just take regular tactical marines and basically just paint them black and put on the decals. And if, yeah, if space, if I didn't get another chance to do the army with all of the new cool Primaris units and specifically the cool Black Templar Primaris units, I probably would not continue with space marines. I probably would just would have gone all in on my Necrons or all in on my orcs and just let them let them go off to a farm and just live out their days somewhere. But yeah, I I, I like Black Templar a lot now. Next up, where do you see 40K in 10 years? That's a good question. I mean, 40K is 30 years old, longer. It's it's an old game and it's always kind of just chugged along. And it's ch I feel like it's changed so, so much over the last 10 years. I mean, 10 years ago, there was no Facebook page. There was no community posts. Every now and then something new would just come out for pre-order. And then we'd be like, hey, what are the rules? And then Games Workshop radio silence and then we'd be like, fair and then buy it it was a, like that's how 40k used to be now we know everything kind of like there's the, there's youtube videos from warhammer official there's animations there's supposedly a movie in the works or a tv show in the works it'll be really interesting to see where the game goes i don't know if it'll get more streamlined looking at like rogue trader versus warhammer 40k 10th edition almost no similarities I wonder if in 10 years we would also see a game with almost no similarities, or if Games Workshop would maybe break 40k off officially into a tighter, competitive-based rule set and a bring-whatever kind of RPG rule set. I, I could see that happening. They tried to do that with 8th and 9th edition, but there were no takers, so in 10th edition they're just like, whatever. Only, only official tournament play rules from now on. But I would like to see kind of a return to the classic, like, you almost need a DM to play Warhammer 40k properly. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Next up, forget 40k for a second. Who makes the best burger? Gotta be Culver's. Gotta be Culver's, the double deluxe with the bacon, the new thick cut bacon. Mm. Oh, I, I'm hungry now. I'm really hungry. Next up, I farted Jay. Same.
Next up, Penny that doubles in size every day or dinner with Jay-Z. Uh, I think I would have to pick dinner with Jay-Z because a penny that doubles every day, wouldn't it be the size of Earth after like a month? Like doubling every single day, exponential growth. I mean, is there any copper in penny or are they all just zinc? If I can, if I can somehow carve off parts of the penny and use them as like resource, that there could be something to the penny, but if it doubles every single day, like if I cut the penny in half, would one penny be dead and one half of the penny keep growing? I don't know. I, I don't think I can make the penny work. I think I got to go Jay-Z. Next up, have you watched The Brave Little Toaster? Yes, it is a absolute trip of a movie. It is so weird and bizarre, but cutesy. It's I, I kind of love it. It's a great movie. Next up, do you kiss each and every model you make good night? Yes, I do. Next up. Hi. Hi. Next up, how many oats would Hall of Oats haul if Hall of Oats could haul oats? Also, what are you going to do when you beat Scott, the miniature maniac, with your Drakari? Oh, uh, I, you know, we haven't really talked about a, like, what the winner gets and what the loser gets. I guess what happens to the loser. So yeah, we're gonna have to, gonna have to figure that out. I also really need to work on my Drakari army. I think I'm a little, little bit behind, but I have some big ideas. Next up. How's the Malifaux coming along? Still enjoying. I love Malifaux. I feel like though, whenever I do a Malifaux army, I need to either, it's kind of needs to be an all or nothing, like an, a little war band of Malifaux guys. The the few times I've act, I've gotten a bunch of Malifaux crews done, but like Coalette Dubois and the Star Theater, I feel like I knocked it all out in a few months. Nakima and the Black Blooded, I finished them all over the course of a month. And then my Yoko Hamasaki crew, I finished them in like a week. So I think I, I need, I love Malifaux, but I can't just tinker with Malifaux. I have to like sit down, clear my shelf and just do Malifaux and actually be able to get it done. But I, I, I have some plans and I have some crews for the future. And last but not least, do you have a favorite 40K novel? Yes, I do. The Infinite and the Divine. It's a beautiful story about two old Necron men just going on a big old, it's like a buddy cop movie. It's just a long adventure which from the Necrons perspective takes place over the course of thousands of years. But in the novel, it just feels like two guys. And then the years spanning adventure just feels so silly and so extra. It's a lovely, silly, fun and flavorful novel. Although I would say uh, a really good novel that I read is Day of Ascension. Day of Ascension is kind of a short novel about the Gene Stealer cult and Gene Stealer Cult are usually depicted as monsters, just like the Tyranid are in like their codexes and in other short stories. In that book, you, by the end of that book, you root so hard for the plucky little Gene Stealer Cult. It's, it's a wonderful read. It completely changed my overall like thoughts and feelings on the Gene Stealer Cults because before, I like the idea that they're just horrible monsters, but knowing that they're just, they're just doing their darndest and hopefully one day they'll win. And if they win, everyone, including themselves, loses. It's it's a wonderful read. But that'll do it for Q and J. A lot of wonderful, fantastic comments and questions. I really had a good time reading it, and it reminded me of my Malifaux team. So I might I might have to clear clear some time out of my schedule to do some more Malifaux. Thanks for watching.